Let's take a look at a limit as x approaches 1 for this function, 2x squared minus x minus 1 all over x minus 1. Now we're going to look at this numerically, algebraically, and what this would look like on a graph and how to take care of these each individual way. Now we're not allowed to actually plug in 1 into this function all right? because if we put a 1 down here, we get 1 minus 1, we'd be dividing by 0. We're not allowed to do that. It would not be in the domain for that function but we could plug in values very close to 1. That's illustrated on the, on the left-hand table for values just smaller than 1. Going from 0.9, replacing each one of the x values with that, th that would work out to 2.82. If we get a little bit closer to 1, we could go 0.9998, replace each one of our x values in there, and you'll notice we get 2.9996. As we pick subsequent values of x closer and closer to 1 and plug them in from just below 1, we're going to get values of y, our output values of f of x, look like they're getting closer and closer to 3. We can do something pretty equivalent uh, for values to the right-hand side of 1. Like if we plug in 1.1, that's fairly close. Replace each one of the x's in our original function with 1.1 and evaluate using the calculator, you get 3.2. Pick values closer and closer and closer until we're almost on top of 1, just a little bit bigger. And you'll notice that the corresponding y values on the right-hand side of the table um, get closer and closer to 3 as well. Therefore, we could say, based on these numerical tables, that the limit as x approaches 1 for this function is approaching 3, or it would equal 3. Now plugging in numerically and using tables can be a little bit of a pain because we have to plug in all these values in for our x's and evaluate using our calculators over and over again. Another way we could do this is we could do this algebraically. So it's the exact same function. To algebraically do this, what we'd want to do is we know we can't plug in 1, replace each one of the x's with 1, or else we would get a 1 in our, or get 0 in our denominator. Instead, what we want to do is think about factoring the numerator. So in this case, our numerator is going to factor as x minus 1 and 2x plus 1. Um, you could use whichever method you're comfortable with to factor that, but it should work out that way. Now from here we can reduce, and with limits, putting this in lowest terms, we can eliminate that common factor between numerator and denominator, and this limit is going to correspond to the limit as x approaches 1 of 2x plus 1. All right, from here we don't have to worry about replacing each of the x's with 1 and getting a 0 in the denominator. Instead, from here what we can do is we can simply plug in 1 for x and figure out this is 2 plus 1 also equals 3. That exact same limit that we saw using numerical tables up above. Now you may be wondering what the graph of this looks like. The graph of this um, function, this rational function that we started out with, 2x squared minus x minus 1 all over x minus 1, is going to be the exact same looking as the graph of 2x plus 1. The only difference is it's going to have a hole in the graph uh, at x equals 1. So to graph that, that would have a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 2. All right, slope of 2, y-intercept of 1, thinking y equals 2x plus 1. So y-intercept of 1, and then we'll go up 2 into the right one, up to the 2 into the right one, or down 2 into the left one. Down 2 into the left one to get additional points on our graph. Connecting these points together, we're going to get a nice line. Now the only difference between this, which is the graph of 2x plus 1, and that rational function that we're looking for is we had a removable discontinuity at an x value of 1. So this point right here is not going to be on our graph. We can express that by using an open circle to indicate that that point has been removed. That's why it's a removable discontinuity when you have the same factor between numerator and denominator. You're going to notice if we were to trace this graph in from the left hand side and from the right hand side, both these sides are going to meet up at that y value of 3, that's why the limit actually equals 3 here. Alright, hope this helps. Good luck.